my name's Joel Hargis with the Florida Aviation Network. We are starting a new series today called Veteran Flyers. And I'm really excited because there's so many fantastic veterans with stories to tell. And today we've got a doozy. I am here today with Gene O'Baker. And I've known Gene for several years. And uh, uh, he always teases that he's the world's greatest fighter pilot. And he may very well be. How are you doing today, Gene? I'm doing wonderful. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Gene, we want to go back in the time machine, if you will, and uh, talk about how you got started flying, um, the different aircraft that you've flown, share with us some of your greatest mission stories of your career. And you looking forward to doing that with us today? I sure am. So I want to start off with this. Here is a picture that... Um, you want to hold that there? So uh, there's a story that goes with this picture. Can you, can you share that with us, Gene? Sure. This was a picture in a magazine, a magazine article back in 1956. And you can verify the 1956 because that's the 1956 Thunderbird sitting next to this jet fighter. This jet fighter was being introduced as the F-100 Super Sabre jet the first supersonic jet fighter. And I read that article, and I, and I gave it a, a, about 30 seconds of thought, and I said, that's what I want to do. How old were you, Gene? I was 19 years old. 19 years old. No, I, actually, I was 16 years old. 16 years old. Yeah, it was 1956. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So I was 16 years old, and I knew that's what I wanted to do, and, and I just set my goal to do that. And you, you wanted to fly the Super Saber. Right. And, and you and, did. And, and, and I did. <laughs> and 12 years later, I was on my way to Vietnam in that Super Saber. 12 years later. So let's, first let's put that down. So that, that Red Thunderbird, tell us just a little bit about that. Well, I, I looked at that Thunderbird, and, and I said, and I wouldn't mind having that little Red Thunderbird also. And so I went out and bought me a 56, 57 Thunderbird. I got, I got the 57 because it was prettier than the 56, but I got red, and so I was true to the collar, true to the model, but just one year newer. And, and, and I noticed when I rolled up this morning, he had his garage door open, and there is a red 57 Thunderbird parked in the garage, mint condition. It's absolutely beautiful. It is. So, mm -hmm. all right, so you decided... I mean, golly, you're 16 years old. You decide, oh, I'm going to fly a Super Saber. Tell us how that came into fruition. Well, it was a bumpy road. But I, first of all, I had a few years to work on it. But I, the first thing I t you did for me at that age is to apply to be an aviation cadet. And that's you, you could go into that at 18 years old. And uh, so I have applied for aviation cadets and uh and i went to washington dc and with the faa and it was tested physical and all that stuff i passed everything except for one item I failed I, my teeth were terrible because i came from a place in cumberland maryland that that had terrible water and I grew up on that terrible water. And so the Air Force says you, you have to go back and get all those teeth repaired, and then you can go into aviation cadets. So that's, that's pretty uh, – that was probably a little disappointing. And, and actually it didn't uh, – even though you had been accepted into pilot training in cadets, by the time you got that done, well, didn't get in, did you? Well, what happened was uh, – when I got all my teeth fixed and they sent it back to the Air Force, uh, I, it, they had filled all the aviation cadet pilot training uh, slots because they had started up the Air Force Academy. Oh, so that was it. And so, so yeah. So, so the the guy says you can go in as you can go in the navigator program. And, and and maybe in after a couple of years as a navigator, you can apply for pilot training and get crossover training. I said, yeah, right. And and 
and uh, you was afraid and, you were going to get stuck in the back seat forever, weren't you? Yeah, uh, and and he said, "But but you can go to the Air Force Academy." And well, I had plans on my pre-planned uh, program. What we were, me and my fiance at that time, were going to get married after I graduated from aviation cadets, which was a year. Once you got your wings, you Once were going to get married. Okay. Yes, and you, had, you couldn't get married before then. Anyway, uh, now I can't get into pilot training, but I can get go into navigator training because they cut out pilot training for aviation cadets because of the Air Force Academy. And I said, well, I don't want to go to the Air Force Academy. That's four years, and, and, and my girlfriend ain't going to wait that long. So I decided to go into navigation training and do like they said, to try to switch over later. So you became a backseater, a Rio. Yeah. Um, and what airplane was that in? Well, that was uh, an interesting choice. I, I elected to go. Uh, most navigators end, ended up in bombers and stuff like that. I ended up in the back seat of an F-101 Voodoo. And, F-101 and, Voodoo. Which was a blessing because I learned a lot about flying to being in the back seat of an F-101. So that that was just a benefit to me towards that eventual. Now, did process. did the did your front seat pilot let you fly the airplane once in a while? Oh yeah, and we had target airplanes that, uh, and we uh, two seaters, and, and they, I, I could fly that all day long. <laughs> so back in that time, the Voodoo was about the baddest airplane in the air, was it not? It was. It was. It's, it's a supersonic interceptor, and. Uh, and what year was this? About. <laughs> Uh, uh, 1960 till 1963, 65. Okay. Area. Yeah. So I've 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 spent a few years in that uh, flying in the F 101, and meanwhile applying for pilot training. Right. And then you and did uh, get accepted. Uh, Obviously. You want me to throw a story in here? Go for it. Well. Uh, I had a good friend, his name was Rich Trainer, and uh, he was a backseater like me, and he was getting ready to go to S Squadron Officer School, which is a long school. And he comes up to me this, this particular day and says, hey, Gene, can I have your flight today because I'm getting ready to go to SOS and I won't get to fly for a while. I said, you're just a time hog. And he said, How I said, however, <laughs> I said, however, I'll flip you for it, and I flipped a, a coin. I said, call this coin. I flipped a penny, and he called it. He won the call, and and he took my flight. Now, the story goes on. So he, his, the guy he was flying with that day was that guy's last flight in the F-101. He was being transferred. Okay. It was his last flight in the 101 in more, in more ways than one. And so they uh -oh. go, they go out and they're, they're flying their flight and the the pilot the front seater home was nearby and he buzzes his family's home in the F101 lost control of it and they crashed and they were both killed. Oh no. So that would have qual disqualified me for pilot training forever. Wow. So that, that was the <laughs> best coin toss you ever lost. <laughs> so that's correct. Well, that's I, that's a great story. I've never heard that story. So, yeah. so then you got accepted, and and uh, what what was the first airplane you flew in pilot training? Little Cessna. Uh, okay, uh, a Cessna. Or did you fly a T six? Uh, uh, no, a Cessna one seventy two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, stripped down, and and we flew. I, I was I was in Arizona, uh, near south of Phoenix. They had this trip down there. My instructor was a Mexican. Dust crop, uh, dust crop pilot. Oh boy! And uh, he's going to teach me how to fly. So he, we get in an airplane first day, and he looks over to me and he says, "This flying isn't very difficult at all." He leans down, he takes off his shoes, slides his seat back, and he took the airplane and started flying with his feet. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Do as I say, but not as I do. No, it, it, it made sense. It hit me. 
That's you right. Said, it is. is. It's not very hard. Yeah, <laughs> we can do this. And so, the, I, fortunately, I started excelling in my class and, and did, did really well. Well, that backseat time in the voodoo probably that didn't helped. hurt you, right? The, uh, just what Mr. Gonzalez said to me, that stuck at home and it helped me. It was, it was a fantastic thing. So Keep that mic up there. We don't want to lose it. Okay. Yeah, there you go. All right. All right. So, so then you got through the 172, you got your pilot's license, and then when did you start flying jets? Well, the, the next – after that uh, uh, small prop plane, we went into the Tweety Bird, the T-37 jets for primary uh, pilot training, and uh, about, I think, 90 hours in that. And then I, we went to the T-38 Talon. T-38 Talon. Now, uh, that, now if, if folks don't know what that is, look, pull that up online. That is the – it just looks like it's going at Mach 1, sitting on the ramp. And I've always been told those were the easiest – just an easy bird to fly. Well, and I would got a lot of pre-training in that airplane because when I was a kid, every night – our television stations closed out the pro the the day's videos with this high flight uh, video of a T thirty eight zooming and climbing and and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, this guy is, is reading this poem about slipping the surly bones of the earth and he zoomed the T thirty eight up stuck out his hand touched the face of God ah uh, there. And That's pretty cool. I watched that for so many months. When I got in that T-38, I already went and even I got out of father. <laughs> I didn't need any training. <laughs> oh, that's a good story. So that's that's cool. I mean, I'd, I'd love to take a ride in a T-38. Um, and so so you got through your training. You got your wings. Barely. Uh, but, but And, you know, one uh, of the cool things you, is you wanna, that you got to be a fighter pilot and not – Flying bombers or yeah, cargo yeah. or yeah, I I got uh, as a matter of fact, I got the only fighters in the squadron front seat. A couple guys got back seat F fours, but I got F one hundred Super Saber jet. So yeah, you got assigned to the F one hundred Super Saber. Yes, and they sent you to Vietnam, didn't they? Right, right away, and that was a hoot. So, <laughs> I, first of all, let me ask this. Um, how many missions did you fly in the F-100 Super Saver in Vietnam? About, Remember? No. About 75. 75 missions in the Super Saver. Yeah, yeah. And, Something like that. And uh, you get in a few dogfights in that? No. We were close air support. Oh, okay. Okay. And we used to drop 500-pound uh, high-drag bombs. We carried six of those on the wings. Wow. And we carried two napalm cans, 750-pound cans of napalm. And that gave us, gave us eight uh, ordnance deliveries plus our guns. And we would deliver the, those 500-pound high-drag bombs at 50 feet at 500 knots. 50 feet at 500 knots. Oh, my. So oh, my. No, no room for error there. Well, you, you you come over the target, you you got the target out over over the end of the airplane, and you see it, and you pull your nose, to, so, so your nose comes right over the target, and, it, and when the target goes under your airplane, you pickle, you can't miss. At 50 feet. So at 50 feet, though, did you ever get struck by gun, ground fire? Nope. They came. I was going too fast. Going too fast. And okay. I and when I when I'm coming into the target area, I'm turning. So right, they, right. They so get, couldn't get they a good shot. Lead. On they right. couldn't get a lead on me, and and so it was so easy. And I just pull my nose, pull my nose right around to where that target is, down, pickle, and sink. And so, do you have a favorite super saver combat story? A favorite story? Oh no, they were they were all great. They were, just <laughs> <laughs> they I, were I, all great. I just couldn't get enough of them. No yeah, kidding. Yeah, because I know. I mean. God bless our veterans from Vietnam or in any any war for that matter. But 
um, that was a tough war, and it really was. Oh, and yeah, um, it was. And there are many, many uh, we were, we were people your age didn't live through it. Right. I, I lost, pilots didn't live I through lost it. I lost several buddies, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they couldn't catch me. So they couldn't catch you. So uh, world's greatest fighter pilot. So, so Gene, after the Super Sabre, did, did you fly the F-4? Or no, I went to uh, Air Training Command. I didn't have any choice. Uh, they told me where I was going, and I was an instructor a in the T-37 at pilot training, for pilot training, and, and I used to train uh, exchange students from uh, other countries, and, and it was a lot of fun. And did you do that training in the States? Or? Yes. Okay, at, back, at, back in the at States. Williams Air Force Base, Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, okay. Yeah, it, was, it was a great assignment, and, uh, and, and I called him, told him, hey, I'm, I'm enjoying his training and these students, but I would like to go back to Vietnam. And so one day the guy called me and he said, where do you want to go? I said, F-4 Phantoms to Vietnam. And next thing you know, I'm on my way to Vietnam again in the F-4. Wow. So, and at that time, the F-4 was the fastest thing. I mean, that probably, it, yeah. Yeah. I uh, mean, that, that was the workhorse of Vietnam. And um, it always got said about the F-4 and the pilots that it wasn't a very good dogfight airplane, and a lot of them got shot down by the MiG. And so what was your experience with that? Oh, I never got shot down, that's for sure, but I got shot up a couple times. Right. <laughs> but it didn't get me good enough. Right. But uh, we had a lot of Did you get a few messages. kills in that thing? Uh, no. Never, never got a MiG in my sights. Uh, again, more ground support. A lot of ground support. Uh, a lot of refueling. A lot, a lot of nights on the tanker, fought, uh, shifting on and off of the, the tanker, waiting to hit the target at nighttime. And a lot of those those kinds of things, and it was just a fun tour. Uh, uh, but it, I never saw a MIG. I used I used to. Uh, escort recce's, uh, RF-4s, uh, the reconnaissance fighters, uh, and w when they, when they, when you rest, uh, when I, I, this is my highlight of, of, of escorting in the F-4 was when you escorted an, a, a recce, uh, uh, they go as fast as the airplane will go. They're an F-4 also, only they don't have all the equipment that my F-4 had, so they're lighter. So they could go faster than we could, but they didn't go s straight. They uh, they had the patterns d laid out where they could they'll make a turn. Every Shooting so recon, and so yeah. So Shooting so pictures and stuff. And, and and avoiding ground fire. And so every time they would turn, I'd have to turn inside of their turn. So if they're pulling three Gs, I got to pull four to five Gs to s stay inside of the turn to cut them off to keep them keep them on keep on top of them. And, uh, but that was good. A uh, lot of, a lot of re or, uh, refueling up over North Vietnam, and hitting targets. But nothing ever, nothing exciting ever happened. To Did me. you get some surface-to-air missiles shot at you then? That? <sighs> Not that I noticed. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um, do you have a favorite F-4 story from Vietnam? I can't think of anything off the top of my head. How uh, did that airplane fly uh, compared? I know. Okay. Oh, okay. Go. Okay. On one of my recce flights, my backseater got airsick. Oh, geez. Because I, it was such a... Uh, yeah, pulling hard turns. Yeah. Pulling hard turns, back and yanking and janking, and, and uh, he ended up throwing up. He had to take his glove off and threw up in his glove. He... he, he Later, went to pilot training, and he ended up in F-16s. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he did good. But, he, but that's about the most exciting thing that happened in the F-4. <laughs> so, and how, how was the F-4 to fly versus the Super Saber? Differ different. It's a bigger, it's he a bigger, bigger heavier airplane. airplane. Yeah. A, a Super Saber is a sweet, sweetheart, you know. She'll, you, you, the you, Super Saber will turn. Yeah. And yeah. the F four, you got to climb and fight that uh, way, right? Well, mm -hmm. you, it'll turn too, but but you run out of. 
it burns its speed out faster than right. the F100. Right. F100 can keep its speed up and turn and burn. Turn, yeah. turn and burn, yeah. So that's cool. So, and any any idea how many missions you flew in the F4 in Vietnam? No. Uh, probably 100 or so. All right. Some so you're in the there. you're in that 200 combat missions between the Super Saber and the F4 in Vietnam. Yeah, I have to verify that, but I probably All right. <laughs> that's a lot of missions to still be yeah. sitting here talking I, to I, us, I, I flew as many as I could. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You you even cheated a little bit, as I remember, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> you want to tell that story? Remind me. Oh, it's uh, they had a board. Oh, yes. And you would go yes. in and like yes. a race yes. and yes. put your name ahead of others. That's, that's right. When I first got to the squadron, uh, I was being showed around the, the flight uh, building where we flew out of, uh, where parachutes were, and where the the log in place was, and they had this big grease uh, grease chart, grease pencil chart, grease board, yeah, mm -hmm. grease board, yeah, grease board. They had this grease board, and they had the pilots' names down the side, and the day of the month one through thirty one across the top, and every time you flew a mission, you went in and put a, a grease mark one in that. On that day for that flight, if you flew two, you put a two, and the, and the scheduler keep totals running at the end of the board. Well, I looked at that, and being a computer kind of person, I said I can work with this. <laughs> and so, about uh, about after about a week or so of the, going into the month, I'd uh, when nobody was around, I'd sneak in there and race one of my ones off of the grease board. And then uh, again, when the second half of the month, I do it again. I did it every month to re race two missions off the grease board. And my flight record, uh, my squadron record shows I flew this many missions. And my flight record, official record, showed 24 more missions. That's crazy. And so. Isn't that crazy? So, Just so uh, you could fly more combat. Yeah. That's what I was there for. Yeah, well, and that's what you were loving, right? Yeah. So, Gene, after your tours in Vietnam, what? I'm sure you got sent stateside. What What did you do next? Well, I went to uh, George Air Force Base in California where uh, we were training uh, students, uh, you know, gra graduate students to fly the F-4. And we also, I was in charge of the, the German F-4 Top Gun School. In charge of the German Top Gun School. Top Gun School. And yeah. what version of the F-4 were you flying that at that was, point? That was an F-4F. Uh, it was a or F-4, F-4, F or G, I can't remember. It might, might have been a G because it was a German version. It was a, a specif specifically a German F-4. All right. So, so I did fly the F-4. All right. And so... In uh, I can't, where I'm confused here is we had hold that mic up so we can hear oh, I, now. Okay, okay, no, yeah, I was flying a, a German F4Fs. F4Fs. They were, uh, I was I was confusing that with another airplane. No, and and I, I was in, I was in charge of the training program and and I had uh, uh, some. Of our, I had a handful of our Air Force Top Gun fighter pilots, instructors, and and several uh, German Top Gun instructors. You, re you remember what your rank was at that point? Lieutenant Colonel. You were a light colonel at that point. Okay. Very light. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, so Top Gun. I mean, that's you know, I I have always dreamed as a kid to be a fighter pilot and. Uh, you know, and anybody that loves, you know, fighter planes has seen Top Gun and, and the school. And, yeah. you know, that's just a classic movie. And so how how fun was that? It was it was a hoot. Oh, I think. Yeah, you know, we, we had great kids working for us. The students were great. You know, they were very cooperative. And they, they were well trained when they got there. So right. I, you know. Well, yeah, you had to be selected for that. And and. We did more advanced stuff, of course, with the F four and and, uh, and none, none of the none of the stuff. Would, if you were training normal new pilots in the Air Force, uh, 
into the F-4. It was more of the Top Guns school right. type of, F of students. And, and so uh, did you get some simulated kills on that, I'm sure? Simulated. Yeah. Well, yeah, you didn't shoot the students out of the sky, but yeah, we, you uh, dogfight. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. And in fact, one guy beat me one day. No kidding. Yeah. And I, I think I only, I think I only won, lost one dogfight training, and it was a German student that got, got on my tail. Got on your six. Yep. And uh, so I had to buy him beer. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. But if, I mean, if that happened one time out of God knows how many missions. Right? Oh, yeah. That, that's, one time. That's, one time. That's pretty good. Yeah. That is very, very good, Gene. Okay. And um, so you, you probably flew more versions of the F-4 than most. I probably have flown more versions of the F-4 than anybody else. Oh. So D's, I, E's, F's. F's. I flew the C, the D, the hard wing E the slatted wing E, and the F, and uh, RF. I ferried an RF. Oh, wow. So, I mean, that's all of them. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the whole kit and caboodle right there. I, so. I doubt anybody else has done all those. That's pretty cool. Uh, oh, that's, uh, that's very cool. Um, and I, How did you know all this stuff? I told you this before, huh? Yeah, you and I have sat and talked yeah, a few yeah, times. Okay. So right here in Orlando, Florida, there is a park, Joe Kittinger, Colonel Kittinger Park. And there's an F-4, a real F-4 in that park. And I know you were one of the guys that helped get that up. Yep. And um, after some research, you actually flew that airplane at one point. That was funny. Uh, when, when, we got, when we got started our project, Joe Kittinger was in charge of it. This, this, this was his baby. And uh, so he went to the Air Force uh, Museum and requested a an F-4, and they said uh, we could have one, but the, the, the waiting list was about 100 people on the waiting list. Oh, jeez. And, and, uh, and, and, and Colonel Kittinger said to them, well, I'm, that's a shame because we just, we just raised $30,000 in a fundraiser for this project, and the guy's eyes brightened up, and he says, you know, you just moved to number one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Of course, Joe Kittinger's a legend. Yep. He's a legend. Yep. Um, and uh, so, so now, now this, this F-4 is setting out on a Texas campus, flat tires, all the, the canopy open, uh, everything wide open, full of uh, bird poop. Dead birds, and, and we oh, yeah. we had to send these two crews out there with two flatbed uh, trucks, and they t took them apart, cleaned it up, and uh, they put the wings on one track and a few slides on the other track, and brought it back to us, and then we started putting it together. Wow! And uh, and Joe was got all excited because he had flown it three times. It was it, because the airplane was assigned to his squadron. Well, I was in a different squadron, so and I normally didn't fly that model, the F-4. I flew the F-4E. That's e. a D model, isn't it? That's a D model. I flew the F-4E. So we went through it all. We put it all up, and then we got it all done, and, and then we had a celebration. And then about a week later, I'm in my attic, and I see my flight record, and I says, well, let's take a look just, just for, you know, for grins. And I opened it up, and there I had flown that airplane. I, I, and Joe today still doesn't believe me. <laughs> that that's that's a crazy coincidence. No, uh, he probably does. But so Gene, so after flying Top Gun, being a Top Gun instructor, I mean, how cool is that? Uh, what they do? What they do with you after that, Gene? They sent me to the Pentagon. Oh, that stinks. No, it was for my benefit. For rank or something? That's what they're trying to tell me. Yeah, they'll tell you anything to get you to go to the Pentagon. Right, <laughs> right. Well, I I know I'm I'm know several veteran officers, and almost all of them that got to Colonel or above went, you know, oh, oh, to the uh, Pentagon. I I can tell you the story about that. Go ahead. So, uh, I'm at the Pentagon, and I, I had a great job. I was running training for uh, 
the foreign military sales of airplanes. And, and I was involved in NATO AWACS uh, training things for, for that airplane. And so I, I got some good jobs, but I was coming up on my 20th year and I said, hey, I, it's, and I'm going to be at the Pentagon for four years. And I said, I can beat that. I can retire, and then I won't have to stay at the Pentagon for four years. Right. So my my boss catches me in the hallway, and he says, what in the hell are you doing retiring? Uh, I'm, I've am i got you. And your boss uh, was a general, I assume. A, 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 a well-known general. Uh-huh. Do we want to use the name? Uh, you can. Yeah. Dick Secord. Oh, Dick Secord. Okay. <laughs> uh, and and he said, oh, Baker, what are you doing tr- retiring? I said, well, I uh, got 20 years in. I'm at the Pentagon. I don't like, doesn't look like, like I'm going to be flying any airplanes soon. Uh, and so I just decided to retire. He, he says, well, you stay in if I make you a full colonel. I says, if you make me a full colonel, I'll never get out of this building. I, I I was more colorful than yeah, that yeah, when, okay. when I said it. Well, I'm glad you're censoring uh, it. And he, he shakes his head. He says, well, I don't know what to do with you. Walks away. That that was uh, like a Tuesday. That, that Friday, first thing in the morning, I get a phone call from Military Personnel Center. Colonel Obecker, where would you rather fly F-15s, Germany or Japan? I said, Japan. F-15s. And... and and that fast, it didn't. didn't Japan. <laughs> it didn't take me a second there. Wow! So the F-15, man, that, that I mean, to this oh. day, there's never been an F-15 Eagle shot down. I mean, ever. Oh. So, so you went to Japan. Yep. And you you started flying the F-15. Yep. So how was that to fly versus F-4s and Super Sabers? Nothing like it. Okay. What well, what made it different? Well, it's, it's fast. It's real fast. It's a 9G capable. Yeah. Woo. And can you stay awake at 9Gs? Well, uh, it, it can have, have after effects. Oh, I bet. And 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 we had this co- we, training mission. We were going to fly two F-15s, and I'm leading two F-15s. This, this is out of Okinawa, Japan. And we're out over the ocean between Okinawa and the Japanese mainland. And over the ocean, we can go supersonic and not destroy buildings. And <laughs> and so uh, we had set up a training flight w- between two Air- Navy F-14s. That's the Tomcat. The Tomcat. Gun, yeah. the Tomcat uh, F-14 uh, from, Tomcat. From That's the Top Gun plane. Yeah. From the Top Gun movie. Right. Yeah. So we're going to we're going to mix it up with them. Now we're. G- we're flying out over the ocean, and, and uh, we're looking for them, and we can't pick them up on radar. And um, these guys are coming from the south. They're coming off a carrier, two Tomcats, and they what they did, they cheated. Uh-huh. They, they stayed at 50 feet. Uh, off uh, the water, so they couldn't we get them on could, radar. We couldn't pick them up. And first thing I, I hear is my wingman says, Lead, you got a bogey nine o'clock closing. I look nine o'clock, and I'm looking down the air scoops. This this F-14 is trying to pull lead on me, and, and I went. I'm still my neck's going this way. I go, bam, 90, 90 degrees back, 9G break, and I felt my nose, my neck pop. Oh, I'm still taking pain medicine for that. Oh, jeez. But uh, yeah, I, I, n- I negated his attack, and we won. And and, and n- never, never gave it up. <laughs> get, get that mic up there, Gene, so we okay. can hear these great <laughs> stories. So, <laughs> you had uh, you, you were running like uh, the the war games out over the water. Wasn't that your job? Yeah, uh, we we would uh, hook up with a lot of the d- nations over there and do training with them. And I used to go around to the different countries and. Try to talk them into do it. Some 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 uh, uh, generals were afraid they're going to hurt our, their airplanes, and they uh, they have such oh yeah, so few of them. Yeah, they have you know they don't they don't like wasting airplanes, and so but we were able to get a lot of 
uh, countries to participate with us, and, and we had exercises about every weekend, every week, every end of the eighth week. Just so was it fun or, you know, having war games in the F-15, or was it more fun in the F-4 and Top Gun school? F-15s. F-15s were more fun. It's, it's just it's a good do dogfight airplane. Oh, my God. It's well, it's... It's it's kind of the that. gold standard almost to this yeah. day. I yeah. mean, you know, it, yeah. they they are incredible. Um, uh, so that was your last tour of duty, right? And in fact, uh, one of the things that motivated me in the Air Force when when I when uh, I was a kid and I'd watch the end of the TV day, they had this poem "Hi Hi Fight" I mentioned before. They they have that poem on there. The last time I looked at it, it, the airplane wasn't a T-38 like it had been when I was growing up. It was one of the F-15s from the squadron I was in. Oh, really? That's uh, wow. That's and then it's doing the same thing, high flight, and and the same guy t telling the poem, and it's that's pretty cool. Well, that's an incredible story. That's an incredible story, and and uh, I'm so glad you've taken time with us today. I mean, you know, you're in the National Aviation Hall of Fame. But you. it's all lies. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, well, I made all that up. As you look around the room here, there's just so many plaques and trophies and things. We are, uh, we're going to share some of those uh, on the tail end of this video. Um, again, I want to thank you for spending time with us, Gene. My pleasure. And I am Joel Hargis with the Florida Aviation Network. In our new series veteran flyers today with world's greatest fighter pilot, Gene O'Baker.